Sheikh Farooq Muhammad, the beauty and brains academic manager, Mom Aisha Birai, and the best colleague, the very dedicated ICSA instructors and staff, the ever smart masters of ceremonies. Ms. Marcel and Ms. Adora, respected guests, friends, loved ones, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant afternoon. I think still afternoon. It's 5.20 to be exact. <laughs> It is a great pleasure and a great privilege to have been invited again as a special guest to grace momentous occasions like this. Kidding aside, it's a little overwhelming if I may say so. Thank you, ICSA, for endowing me your trust, although I have earnestly declined Ms. Aisha's invite for the reason that I doubt myself whether I really can give justice to be your inspirational speaker. But because of her persistence, her convincing power, and her irresistible charm, I stand before you today to bring you a message of rediscovery, a message of hope, a message of moving on and letting go. A message of self-love. A message of strength. A message of believing. A message of gratitude. And most importantly, a message of faith. At this juncture, I want to share a secret, a little secret. And since it will be publicly shared, it becomes now an open secret. But don't you worry, because I was given a permission to do so. Hindi naman tayo nagmamarites dito, okay? Or nagmamarisong. So, to begin with, this is a tale of a woman I very well know and whose story might resonate to many of you who are present in this venue today. I re I, I'd like to emphasize, this speech is not exclusively to the women, but it embodies everyone in this event. It's just that our protagonist or the main character of the story, of the tale, of the narrative is a woman. I know you are all familiar with the saying, love is blind. Are you? Yes. Do you agree with that? Yes. I beg to disagree. I beg to disagree. Love is not blind, but lovers are. Yes. Right or wrong? Right. Thank you. Okay, so let me start. After nearly two decades of turning a blind eye to a gambling, alcoholic, and womanizing husband, this woman had finally reached the painful decision. She soon became emotionally, physically, and financially exhausted. And that the only way to redeem herself and to survive was to cut the ties. You know what I mean, to get separation. It wasn't something she wanted to do, but it had to be done. It must be done. Although she made very possible effort to heal the situation, there was no choice left anymore. The once blissful marriage ended in betrayal. Expectedly, the marriage had reached the game over level this time. However, even after 
the physical separation problems did not stop. At some point, she was caught in the middle of a financial knockout. She endured personal loss, defeat, and rejection, and the deepest wounds inflicted out of this misery must have devastated her undoubtedly. She felt bitter. She felt ripped apart. Can you relate? Do some of you need a box of tissue to dry your tears? Right? The beginning of the story seems to sound miserable, right? But I advise all of you guests and graduates to keep listening as, the, as her story unfolds. And from here, you can draw out at least an ounce of inspiration, which could be your takeaway. Countless months have passed, and in one of the dark, quiet nights, while she was in bed, and she was struggling to go to sleep, there were visions, visions coming all over, visions of letters and of words and of symbolic images. She stood up, took her pen, and began writing, page after page, spilling out words of healing, a few lines at a time, and this continued on and on and on. In another instance of those sleeplessness, she would sit down in front of her canvas, expressing herself with the emotive use of acrylic colors, creating distinct brush strokes. And this continued on and on and on. Symbolically, this woman has started looking beyond her own horizon. While it is true that she will always have a pocket of sorrow in her heart, that does not stop her from finding joy in the little things. And when she looks back on those difficult years, those struggling years with a husband, she can see that life has room for a little of everything. She adjusted to being on her own again, happy. Today, more than ever, she has been more accepting of the changes that have happened in her life. Now, she has found happiness in being alone with her passions, her poetry, and her arts. Each year that passed brought her battered heart a renewed sense of hope, strength, and independence. Now, I watch this woman with joy as she began to view herself differently. No longer is she unassertive about her own potentials and achievements. No longer is she quiet about expressing her own opinion. She is realizing once more that she is a person who matters. A person whose hopes and desires could still soar like a beautiful butterfly. A person who has courage and stamina. A person who is valuable. She, this woman, has finally rediscovered her own worth, her spirit renewed, and gradually that dark night of the soul just remains to be a thing of the past. She was amazed the most as to how God yielded light from the darkest moments of her life, how God maneuvered the steering wheel of her life is beyond words of gratitude. Little did she realize 
that one day, one day, she would eventually become a creative writer and a frequently invited public speaker, local and overseas. Thank you, Ms. Bats. I must say, this has been her deep-rooted dreams. Yes, it's true, at some point in our lives, we all go through a darkest night when our lives seem barren, desolate, and worthless and painful. But all of you here, all of us here, no one is an exemption. Like the woman in the story, have the option to look at your situation in a different angle, in a different perspective. Refocus, reframe yourselves. Again, like the woman in the story, you can turn a page of your life by discovering or rediscovering what you can do with what you are passionate about, with what you can offer the world, and with what you are happy the most. Don't let life's difficulties knock you down. Try to pick up the threads of your lives. Get back on your feet again. Sometimes you dance with a partner, and sometimes you dance alone. But the most important thing is to keep dancing amidst the agonizing dark night and along the storm tossed seas. Be a dancing queen, be a dancing king in your own right even to the off kiss of life. When I say off kiss, sin tonado, eh? the towns of life. To convey inspiration to all of you, it is my hope that each one not to lose hope. Hope is a powerful word. It is a four letter word, but the power is so significant. Hope is what keeps us going. It is hope that cheers us up through despair. And at this point, I'd like to quote a traditional Russian saying. It says, hope dies last, which explains that hope drives us to live and endure. And that even if everything around us is not okay, but if we have hope in our heart, then we can survive. In conclusion, may you continue to strive to bring out the best in you. Unleash your potentials. Shine if you must. Again, like the woman in the narrative, Learn to acknowledge and rediscover that there is a better person, figuratively, a lovely butterfly within each of you, a powerful metamorphosis from a despondent soul into a great, beautiful soul. Let me have a break. Before I finish, I leave you an interesting question. Who do you think that woman might be in the story? Congratulations to all the graduates and to all the people behind the success of this commencement exercises. Thank you. Yes, 
I know you are. You are born ready, correct? Okay. In fact, now education doesn't only happen in the four corners of the classroom. With the advent of technology, we can now enjoy virtual learning, which gives us a platform to be mentored by experts in any part of the world. Yes, indeed, Maria. And by that, we will get to hear from our lovely instructors from the Philippines for the health and social care courses. First, we will watch a video message from Ms. Paula Joy Dumagi, who is a registered nurse and has been in the healthcare industry for the last 60 years in the clinical field in academia. She believes that every single life and time matters, so she ensures that every day she handles her job with great careful attention. Ladies and gentlemen, let's just watch the video message of Ms. Paula Joy. To all the guests, families, colleagues, and students, good day to everyone. It is my honor and privilege to congratulate all the graduates. Today marks a significant milestone in your life. Take pride on how far you have come. As this moment of your life comes in reality, it is good to reflect to all the effort and dedication that each of you has invested. The tiring days, sacrifices, sleepless nights, and challenges that you have endured to reach this day. Sabi nga nila, lahat ng naghihirapan may magandang kabayaran. Your journey was never been easy. It has been a privilege to watch each student grow into the person you are today. Be proud of this moment. You deserve it. Graduation Day is a testament to your perseverance and dedication. Graduation Day is not just a day. It's a celebration of your resilience, growth, and determination. As you move forward, always carry the lessons that you have learned, the friendship that you made, and the experience that you gain. Your graduation day is a proud moment to all of us who are privileged of being part of your educational journey. Throughout your academic journey, you've shown unwavering commitment to growth and self-discovery. I want to express my heartfelt appreciation for all the hard work and dedication. For making my role as your teacher and mentor both enjoyable and rewarding. As each of you ventures into the next chapter of your life, embrace the change and challenges as a stepping stone of your dreams. Your potential knows no limits. Remember that every setback is an opportunity to come back. And every obstacle is a chance to prove your strength. Know that you are prepared to face the challenges and opportunities that comes your way. In life, success is not just solely measured by material achievements, but the person you become. Congratulations, graduates. All the hard work has paid off. School may be over, but life lessons are yet to be learned. Again, on behalf of the ICSA family, we are all proud of you. Blessings and prayers to your graduation day and to your future. Thank you, Ms. Paula, for the motivational message. Moving forward, we will also hear a video message from Ms. Halsey Cruz, a registered nurse who holds a bachelor's degree. 
degree in nursing and a master of arts in nursing, majoring in nursing administration. She previously worked as a staff nurse before becoming an online instructor at ICSA. Based in the Philippines, Ms. Halse continues to provide quality education and support to her students, ensuring they are well prepared for the challenges ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, let's watch Ms. Halse's video credits. Good day, everyone, to our administrators, academic staff, co-instructors, esteemed guests of honor, family and friends, and most importantly, our graduating students. Some of you may already know me. I'm Halsey Cruz, RN and BN, one of the instructors in Health and Social Care Course Level 4. Many of you may not see me in person, as I teach online classes and I'm currently based in the Philippines. However, I'm deeply grateful for the opportunity to share my knowledge and skills through our institution, ICSA, which has been a gateway for many students to achieve their dreams of earning a diploma, a key that opens doors to a brighter future and better career opportunities. As I mentioned, I teach health and social care. For those unfamiliar with the course, it requires students to complete six assignment essays. 